in this episode, we've made a mistake. Why did we move to this province? Nobody warned us about this. The flies. If you took the old banner store, let the waves go at it for a few thousand years, that's what it'd end up looking like. Well, you've got life insurance on me, haven't you? I don't want that, I want you. I've got life insurance on you. <laughs> if you're watching this, kids, never do this. Follow the rules and all that business. They're really quite impressive. We'll see, I reckon I've got five minutes and then that sun will be down. At least the bugs are amassing. Oh, I love salads, I love. You do? You did bring tweezers, didn't you? I just use my teeth. Well, because you get all twitchy when I stand on cliff edges and it, it knocks me off me, me stroke. You're always rummaging around like a bull. Oh, the flies! Must love all living things, must not strangle husband. Right, so today we're going to a spot that I've been looking forward to seeing ever since I started researching shooting spots in Nova Scotia and it's called Cape Chignecto Provincial Park and the reason why I want to come here is the sea stacks if you know me you know that I absolutely love sea stacks and Cape Chignecto Provincial Park has some of the coolest sea stacks in Canada and where we are is the Bay of Fundy on the Nova Scotian side and it's very very famous for Famous for high tides. The high tides, which reach up to forever. And so the thing about tides that change so rapidly and so dramatically is if you hike out along the coastline, along these cliffs, and the tide comes in, your exit route is gone and uh, you're not going to make it. What we're doing today is we're doing the overview, the sort of viewpoint that looks down over these sea stacks and there's no risk whatsoever. But really, I want to get down on those rocks. Oh God, 18, oh hang on, it's 1.8 kilometers. <laughs> Today's been quite a fun drive because we saw, what did we see? Fox, the red fox. So what well, might have been the same fox twice or two foxes. But red fox, beautiful fox, just like the ones in England. So it kind of made me feel a bit nostalgic for the UK because there aren't any red foxes or foxes on uh, Vancouver Island. So for me here in uh, Maritime Nova Scotia, it was quite the novelty. I think we should have a pet fox yes, yes. and a pet bobcat. Yeah. I think that's, I think it's legal here, isn't it? Well, it won't be a pound knows about it. Shut up. <laughs> Because of the high tides and eroding cliffs, ooh, that's a gnarly tree, this landscape photography adventure starts out from the safety of the many boardwalks, constructed specifically to keep idiots like me from perishing. But is it really that dangerous? I mean, I know that the tide's a bit sketchy and these cliffs are steep, but it can't be that bad, can it? Yeah. It is bad. People die all the time. No, no picture is worth your death. What would I do? You'd make no more pretty pictures? And... Well, you've got life insurance on me, haven't you? I don't want that. I want you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've got life insurance on you. <laughs> oh, that's a nice tree, isn't it? <laughs> That's inappropriate, Amanda. I'll have to delete that. What do you mean? You'll get me cancelled. Just, a, you're atrocious. <laughs> Within minutes, I found what I was looking for and began to stray from the path. I mean, viewing platforms are all well and good, but uh, that's never where the best shot is, is it? But I mean, if you're watching this, kids, never do this. Follow the rules and all that business. It's just not worth it. It's totally worth it. Well, I'm not going to lie to you, it's quite difficult to work with from this, this viewpoint. And uh, I kind of knew that I really wanted to be down on those rocks, but right now it's just not possible. So I know that I, I have to come back here in a kayak just to access this fantastic seascape. And even with just like these gentle waves that are lapping on these rocks here, there's so much potential for foreground. And these sea stacks are huge. They're really quite impressive. That's why I want to be down on the ground looking up at them 
just to take in that sheer grandeur of those sea stacks but this is what I'm working with today I think my only chance of any kind of a shot now it's, it's so weird when we got here the sky was full of clouds and now there is not a single cloud it's completely cloudless so really all I've got is that kind of after sunset belt of Venus type of long exposure shot now that might be all right if the waves start to come in a little bit if the tide comes in and I get some kind of interesting textures or shapes of the water movement but I, I don't think it's going to change that much in the next hour and a half so this might be a bit of a dead loss we'll, we'll see I'm, I'm going to remain hopeful we've come all this way it's only a five hour drive you know ten hour round trip <laughs> it's fine yeah no, we'll see so I've got about maybe an hour, maybe an hour and a half to wait. Got to kill some time. So it's times like this when I just like to reach into my bag and pull out a copy of... <sighs> we brought the books, didn't we? We moved them. Yeah. Oh, thank God for that. I was, I was going to say chasing all with Gavin Arcastle. He is a graphic. I've, I've left it in the camper. It's the best book ever written. I mean, it really is. At least the bugs are amassing in their thousands. Uh, it's going to be a good night. Well, I guess uh, I'll just have dinner then, eh? We've got, got a nice little sandwich or something, something to perk me up. Get a salad. The salad. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, I, I love salads, love. You do. Is, is there a fork? We packed it. Oh, the flies, the flies. Why did we move to this province? Nobody warned us about this. The flies. Everyone warned us. Oh, the flies! It's worse than the midges in Scotland. It's worse than the midges. Nobody told us. Everybody told us. <laughs> Just squirt me my lemon juice. There's flies in my croutons. And maybe we've made a mistake. Get that bloody. Get your bloody Caesar juice. I love a bit of parmesan with my flies. It's just so delicious. Gives it that extra bit of crunch to your croutons, you know. Two or three thousand flies in your salad. Get off, you bastards! Oh, it smells like my feet. Oh, this is terrible. I think we might be... <laughs> I'll just quit the shoot and just go home. I can't deal with it. Must love all living things. Must not strangle husband. I I'm toying with the idea of quitting because I don't... I don't think my shot's going to be worth the 10 hour drive in this light. No clouds. And uh, we're becoming a feast for these, these cretins. So Amanda killed time with some acting. <laughs> don't be pretending like you do exercise. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> no one's fooled. How many reps is that then? Three. Yeah. <laughs> you know that Nova Scotia is known for having quite a lot of ticks. <laughs> I'll just let you think about that for a minute. You did bring tweezers, didn't you? No. Oh, God. Because I can feel something in, in me. Nether regions. Well, I'll just use my teeth. Yeah, I tried to get Thomas Heaton to do that, and he, he refused. A bit weird, isn't it? Anyway, let's get back to the shot and see if there's anything better happening down there. Right, so I'm back down at my spot. I'm going to get my camera out and get set up. So you might want to not watch, love. You might want to just go back to the, the picnic area. Why? Well, because you get all twitchy when I stand on cliff edges and it, it knocks me off me, me stroke. Yeah, you're a spaz. I'm not a spaz. I, I tread very carefully when I go on cliff edges. But I'm still here, aren't I? You're always rummaging around like a bull. That's not what a bull looks like. Anyway, I'm going to get my camera out and start getting set up. Okay, so here's the thing that I'm struggling with the most. So, if I just get my chunky digit, if I point at this pinnacle here, because the light is so dynamic, because the sun is still up, there's no clouds and all that business, there's loads of contrast on these cliffs and on the sea stacks. And that really important pinnacle, that super sharp pointy one, it's just in the shadow of these other ones. So you just, you just can't see it. It's completely ignored by the light. 
So what I'm waiting for now is for the sun to go down so that everything is now in a softer light. There's way less contrast. And so hopefully this guy here will be just a little bit more visible instead of stuck in the shadow of these two behemoths in front of it. So that is my hope, that's my idea. We'll see, I reckon I've got five minutes and then that sun will be down. Tell you what, I would love to come here on a misty morning. Imagine those pinnacles just wreathed in mist all mysterious and creepy even better if you were down on the deck looking up at them and the, the spires just disappeared into the fog you couldn't see the tops of them kind of like the old man of star that's what this reminds me of it, it's like a coastal version if you took the old man of star chucked it on the, the coast and then let the waves go at it for a few thousand years that's what it'd end up looking like would my patience be rewarded and would the softer light finally give us just a little glimpse of that shadowy spire? Well, the sun's gone down and I reckon that's that's about the best I can get with the conditions that I've got. No clouds, no waves, no mist, but it is a spectacular location. And even with crap light like this, it's a half decent shot. But what this has done is it's just wet my appetite to keep coming back here. I expect, as always, I'm gonna have to come back about 10 times to have any chance of fantastic light. And like I said before, I, I need to be down there. Look at all of those shapes and textures and forms. And there's color as well. Once the sun went down, there's a lot of green algae that's kind of popped in the shade. So lots of color, epic subjects, lots of texture. I have got to get down there. So I think I'll be buying a kayak, but I, sh I should probably take a few <laughs> kayaking lessons first. Anyway, this, this cliff is a bit sketchville, as you can see. Uh, this is not uh, Amanda approved. Kind of gives me a little bit of vertigo standing on this cliff edge. And, uh, you know, I am an idiot. You're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to stand so close to the edge because these cliffs, they erode, they collapse. But what I've done is I've made sure that I'm with all of these tightly gripped tree roots. It might not make any difference, but it might make some. So don't do this at home, kids. Don't be like me. Right, I better go and find out what Amanda's doing and uh, put her mind at rest. Right, well, it's good night from Cape Chignecto in Nova Scotia. Hopefully we'll come again. I think you'll be seeing a lot more of this place, if I'm quite honest with you. But if you enjoyed this video, please hit the old like and subscribe. And don't forget to tickle my bell. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.